right? So we'll go with the heart attack and then we'll go to the other things. All right, so as you know, in the heart, so we know there's a, in the heart there are four chambers. Okay. Now, if you see it now, today you don't look into the chambers, you look into the heart muscle, okay? So when you see the heart muscle from outside, it is called pericardium. The outside layer is called pericardium. Pericardium, the outside. And so you can say this is the pericardium. So this outside layer, thin outside layer is called pericardium. Then this big muscle layer is called myocardium. Myo means muscle, myocardium. Cardia means heart. So peri means surrounding and this big flesh of heart muscle this is called myocardium and the inside layer inside layer of the heart is called endocardium this is called endocardium endo means inside endocardium so we divide the heart into three layers okay when you say take the heart the outside outside thin layer is called pericardium the big muscle layer is called myocardium which contracts the heart and the inside layer is called endocardium where there is the valves and everything right so so these are the layers of the heart now chest pain now why there is chest pain we will come to that first you need to know that this part myocardium it makes the heart contract so when this myocardium muscle contracts contracts means the when the muscle shortens okay when this muscle it contracts so which part of the heart contracts myocardium the myocardium it contracts the heart all right now this myocardium muscle also needs blood supply they also needs oxygen they also need nutrition otherwise they cannot contract okay so, the, so in this myocardium there is lots and lots of blood vessels these are blood vessels the different blood vessels the which supplies this myocardium okay which supplies this myocardium muscle so myocardium muscle has to survive on oxygen have to survive on nutrition so that they can pump non-stop 24 into 7 all right so image, let's take one piece of heart tissue let's pick pick this type this portion of the tissue okay and zoom it okay so this is a blood vessel so this particular blood vessel it is supplying it is supplying blood let me wait it's supplying blood to this much area okay so this much area of the myocardium this much area of the myocardium it is supplying blood okay right now let's imagine a person has a heavy cholesterol or high cholesterol in his body so what happens if there is high cholesterol in the body okay so this is the blood vessel now there are two type of cholesterol one type is called good cholesterol one is called bad cholesterol so, so, so the good cholesterol is called hdl and the bad cholesterol is called ldl okay so let's imagine he takes a lots of bad cholesterol in his food lots of oily foods spicy foods all cheese butters everything he consumes so he, it means he have plenty and plenty of ldl in his body plenty and plenty of ldl in his body Okay, so we, now this blood is running in this all his blood circulation. What is running? LDL. This is the bad cholesterol. Okay, so this LDL is running in the blood. Now this blood vessel is also has three layers. This is the inner layer, then there is a middle layer which is called tunica media, and this is tunica axia. It has got three layers from outside to inside. So once there is lots and lots of LDLs these LDLs when they are flowing into the blood so uh, which course of time over time they will migrate to this layer they will migrate here they will migrate here so let me make it now big one 
okay so these are line by cells and now they are alleles so these are alleles bad cholesterol so over course of time this alleles what will do they will damage this endothelial cell they will damage this so when they are damaging this endothelial cells there becomes a gap and as a result this alleles reach here this alleles will reach here into the middle layer of the artery okay into the middle layer which is called tunica media so this it will gather here so this all this alleles will coming here now what happens when they have LDL is coming here there is lots and lots of inflammatory reaction starts so here there will be macrophage, all white blood cells because they have gone, gone into a different territory. They are, should be supposed here but when they are migrating here, there is a go, going to start a new reaction. The body will react. The, what are these particles which is doing in this area, which is no man's land. So what will happen? There will be monocytes, macrophage, all the neutrophils will be there to protect. They don't know. These are whether normal or abnormal, but they know that these are some particles which are in here which should not be there, right? So as a result, now what will happen? They are aggregating here, right? There are lots and lots of collection. So it's the same thing now, you can see the same blood vessel, how it will look like because of the collection, it will be this. Because of the, because of the collection of allele, macrophage and dead cells. So, because LDLs will move inside, so macrophages will come. Macrophages are what they are modified monocytes. If you remember white blood cells, the white blood cells will come there. They will engulf these cells, and they will then. So the macrophages, okay. And let me not confuse you, okay. So this is a macrophage, and they have engulfed LDL. Okay, they have engulfed LDL. Now this. Macrophages LDL, they will also die in a some portion of time. So they, when they will die, they will also liberate this, and then there will be some macrophage here. There will be some LDL here, some die, dead macrophage, some dead LDL, some dead cells. So overall, it's a rubbish thing. Okay, in a nutshell, it's a rubbish thing. So these rubbish things are collecting here, and as a result, this what is happening here. You can see, is going like this. So what is the overall effect? Overall effect is when the blood was flowing this way, now it has got less space. So this part is like a blocking, it's blocking the flow of the blood. Okay, so this is blocking the flow of the blood. So when this, now when 100% of blood is going, now 50% is being blocked. Now when there is a blockage due to collect, due to LDL and macrophage, everything inside, Okay, we call the term, there is one single term for this, we call this atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. I have not gone into detail, I am just making it short to make you understand, okay. So there is a one big chapter for atherosclerosis. So together what we call, we call it atherosclerosis. So as a result of atherosclerosis, what is happening? There is a, this lumen is narrowed. So that now blood which is flowing freely, now there is an obstruction here because of the mountain, big mountain here. There is an obstruction. Okay, there is a because there is an obstruction because there is an atherosclerosis started beneath this layer, right? So there is an atherosclerosis. So blood is not now blood cannot move freely. Blood cannot move smoothly. Now if the blood is not coming in a normal volume because the flow has reduced. Okay, the flow has reduced. So if the blood is not coming at a normal volume, this particular, so, so suppose there is an obstruction in this particular blood vessel, so this particular tissue, this particular section of this whole myocardium or this particular land piece will not get enough oxygen supply coming to the blood. So what will happen here? So this myocardial tissue is slowly the cells inside, they are not getting enough oxygen supply. So what they are doing? They are slowly dying. They are slowly dying, so they will cry out of pain because they are some, they are dying and releasing some lactic acid and other products. So because of that, it is causing pain. Okay, so when there is a pain because of some obstructed blood vessels, 
we call that heart attack. We call that heart attack. The layman people call that heart attack, but health professional they will call it as a myocardial. Myocardial means this myocardial. So this my portion of the myocardium is not getting enough blood supply. So not, when there is a blockage, not getting enough blood supply, we call it as a infarction. Okay. So we don't say heart attack. Heart attack is the term used by the patients. We'll say it as a myocardial infarction or in simply we call it MI. So what is the MI? MI is myocardial infarction. So when there is a myocardial infarction, what, is, what happens in myocardial infarction? So in myocardial infarction, some unfortunate piece of some muscles will, are not getting proper blood supply. So they are usually dying. Why they are not getting blood supply? Because of your lifestyle, some blood vessels have been blocked. Last 20 years you have eaten lots of cheesy foods, spicy foods, oily foods and your LDL is very very high. And so some portion of the heart muscle has is dying because of some blockage in some particular capillary or small branch of artery. And as a result one day you will develop chest pain. Now when there will be chest pain in myocardial infarctions. So remember the chest pain will be like severe kind of chest pain and it will be on the left side obviously heart is in the left side so here there is the heart okay so the chest pain will be yes chest pain will over the chest over the left side of the chest there will be severe chest pain. What type of pain is that, that type of chest pain? That pain, chest pain is like, it's called severe crushing. The patient will say that as if somebody has kept a 20 kilogram or heavy stone on his chest. It's so crushing type of pain, heavy kind of pain. And it's so severe. That type of, uh, Explanation the patient will give. There's something crushing type of. So he'll hold the chest like this. He hold it because it's so severe, as if somebody is sitting on his chest. Okay, it's so it's like crushing type of pain. That type of pain will occur when even a small portion of the heart tissue is not getting enough blood supply. Okay, so that type of. Now remember, when there is a heart attack, as part of other people, or we say myocardial infarction, MI. When there is an MI. The pain is not only here, pain will also go to the left shoulder. He will say there is pain here in my chest and may then be pain in my left shoulder. Okay, so remember that. MI, in the chest pain in MI is pain in the chest, in the left side of, yes, left side of the chest with pain in the tip of the left shoulder, tip, tip of the left shoulder. So pain will go to the tip of the left shoulder. Just for your knowledge point of view, why it pain goes to this tip of the left shoulder? Okay, because when this heart is developing inside the fetus, then the, the nerve, the nerve that is carrying the pain, pain sensation to the brain, there is also one nerve coming from the tip of the shoulder. It also is the same route. It also goes very close to this our cortex. Remember, we feel the pain from the brain. We don't feel pain because of us in the shoulder. Okay, so that part of the brain, it receives this, this two nerves, these two wires, they go very close. So, and when the heart was developing inside the fetus, they develop from the same root, same seed, you can say. Okay, both the nerves. So, whenever this pain goes to the heart, then sometimes the heart, sometimes the brain says, Pain is not only here, pain is also here. So the patient feels pain in also in the tip of the left shoulder. So this type of pain is called referred pain. Sometimes the pain is referred to another area. Okay. One more thing you have to know that when there is a heart attack or MI, there's another thing that starts is called autonomic nervous system, ANS. 
So because of influence of autonomic nervous system, especially because of the sympathetic, I'll come to that in later class. So there is the all our the sweating is initiated. So there will be the patient will feel cold and he will be sweat a lot. There will be chest pain with sweating. His whole face will be drained with sweat. There will be sweating, heavy sweating because of the nerves stimulation. Okay, because of the nerve stimulation, there will be heavy sweating. Your whole face will be drained. So it don't need much time to analyze whether it's a heart attack or not. Okay. Okay. So Ritika, you have a question that if the person reduces the intake of LDL, will it decrease the amount blockage? No. It will. The already that is the damage is done is done. If you now reduce the LDL, it will stop the future blockage. But whatever the blockage was done, it has to be dissolved by medicines. We have to reduce the cholesterol by taking medicines. Particular, we give medicine called statins. Okay, so these statins, these drugs, they reduce the cholesterol amount. Okay, so uh, they reduce the LDL amount. But whatever the now, the, I got a question. Your question is that if you reduce the LDL from today, will it reduce the blockage? No, the block. What the blockage is done is done. So this blockage has to be opened. If it is causing chest pain, then it has to be opened up. So what we call, we have to re remove this blockage. Or sometimes, what we do, if there is a blockage here, it is severely blocking, then we make a tube here, and we are connecting this portion. We are connecting this tube. Sorry here. So what we do, we are doing here. So now because of the blockage, blood that was coming, the blood will flow like this. So that is called bypass. So then people go for bypass. So this is bypass. So there is a blockage, you will just bypass. You put a tube, a stent, artificial tube, connecting from this end to the desk, that end. Putting a stent, which we call a bypass. So other people go for bypassing or they, have to, or they go for operation when we put a thing here. And then when we reach here, we put a net here and we, we put a net, net here, okay, we put a meshwork of net and as a result, the blood can now pass through, we put a net, it's a net which is pushing this blockage downwards. So there are varieties of treatment, okay, but medicine treatment we always give statins, so statins can decrease the LDL level, cholesterol level, provided he takes the necessary precautions of changing in lifestyle. You have to take, go for physical fitness trainings. You have to go for uh, like walking a bit, sweating, all the physical activities and plus reduce the oil amount. So these things will obviously reduce the future blockage of arteries. But whatever damage is done, you have to either reduce it by taking medicines or if it is so big then it can cause a it can cause a severe heart attack so you have to take a surgical treatment like this okay but the problem don't stop here the problem is just started okay if, so let me tell you this let me give you more insight about this so you see this is the blood vessel and now because of high amount of LDL, there is atherosclerosis, which you have discussed. There is atherosclerosis. Okay. So now because of atherosclerosis, what is happening here? Blood is blocking. The space is occupied by this atheroma, atherosclerosis. And as a result, there is reduced flow of blood. To the tissues on the other side right so now the when now you can see there is a blockage on the middle of the road and it is not able to freely flow able not able to free flow now what will happen when now blood is is always in a motion it goes in a motion there should be always a mobility we cannot stop the flow of the blood even for a second okay now if due to some reason the blood flow has become slowed Okay, blood the f uh, speed is suddenly be reduced. What will happen? Whenever the speed is reduced, the one thing that happens is 
if you remember from the last class fibrinogen is quickly converted into fibrin so fibrin is a clotting agent it clots the blood so main problem is here so whenever this blood is now flowing so what happens there is always a most of the fibrinogen if some of the fibrinogen is converted to fibrin and they will form a but they will form they will form a fibrin cap that's the main problem they will form a fibrin cap where they will form a fibrin cap over the top of this atheroma this is this called atheroma okay which is a collection of lipid and dead cells and everything atheroma so over the top of this blockage there is a cap it's like a cap what they call this is called fibrin cap is formed okay now try to imagine a situation there is blood is flowing at a high speed and now there is a on that atheroma, on this blockage, there is also a topping of extra topping of fibrin cap. So first thing is that this narrowing, there is more narrowing or because of the extra formation of fibrin cap, there is it's suddenly narrowed more. There is more reduction in the space. Second thing is because of the high velocity of the blood, high speed of the blood. So this blood which is flowing and hitting this, hitting this atheroma with a cap every time, hitting it. This blood is continuously in motion, so it is hitting it. So what will what may happen in years, upcoming years? What may happen in upcoming years? Anybody can tell me what happen? What can happen? Anybody can tell me what can happen if the blood is continuously hitting this atheroma with this fibrin cap? What can happen? Okay, so what can happen if anybody can tell me what can happen? What can be the consequences? Please try your try. Okay, not a problem if you make any mistake. You will just hear one students. You can always try. Okay, please type your whatever you think. Whatever you think. Okay, don't be shy of expressing your thing. So what may happen if the blood is continuously hitting this atheroma with a fibrin cap? So one day there may be dislodge. This fibrin cap may dislodge from this area. There may be dislodge. It may be dislodge. So dislodging of this fibrin cap from here because of the hard hitting flow of the blood. Is it a good news or bad news? Is it a good thing that we the flow of the blood has removed this fibrin cap which was before it was here? Or it is a bad thing. So now, look, these blood vessels. So these blood vessels are going everywhere. They are dividing into branches. Okay. So now this is what has this fibrin cap that has been dislodged is called an emboli. Emboli. So this emboli can stuck anywhere in a narrow vessel now we know the blood vessels they ultimately they branch everywhere so this emboli is in a flowing blood it can be stuck somewhere in a small blood vessel it can be stuck and as a result another problem this tissue of this particular branch may again become dead so if it happens in imagine if this happens in brain okay this particular blood vessel was coming to the brain so and this is blocked by this emboli so some part of the brain will not get this blood supply huh? and again it will be a problem so there can be paralysis that can be embolism so many other things it can block anywhere this emboli from the heart it can go anywhere over our body and it can block so suppose it blocks our the forearm artery this part will be paralyzed it is not going getting any blood supply it can block in the brain it can block in the hand it can block in the legs it can happen everywhere so that is another second factor first thing is that have, there is an atheroma form because of atherosclerosis because of high layer second there is a topping of can be formed so this is called atheroma oh sorry emboli so this emboli can dislodge and it can block any of the small capillaries in our body so overall, we will not go to the embolization today, we will stick up to here. 
Okay, so overall when these things happens, what happens in the heart? Some of the tissue yeah, of the heart, some of the muscle in the heart, they are not getting enough oxygen supply. Okay, that we call as MI, myocardial infarction. So as a result, because of the crying death cells of myocardium, which is, sub which is craving for oxygen, desperate for oxygen and blood supply, okay, they give severe pain in the chest. We call it as an angina. So angina means chest pain. Okay, as a medical professional, you will say not say chest pain, you will say angina. Angina means if somebody is strangling, somebody has tied your chest and you are not finding enough space to breathe, you are finding difficult to breathe. So that is called angina. Severe chest discomfort, severe chest pain, radiating to the left tip, tip of the left shoulder with heavy sweating. That is myocardial infarction. That is heart attack. Okay, that's how we analyze it. Okay, so when a chest you are in the emergency room, you are in the duty, and suddenly a patient comes with a chest pain, then these are the things you have to note. Is he sweating a lot? What is his heart rate? What, what, we'll go to the other details. Okay, so how he is describing? Is it very severe, or if it's just coming by walking? Hey, I am having a chest pain, and you think it's a heart attack? We admit it. So that may not be a heart attack. Okay. But 1% of cases of heart attack are not having pain. Remember that. There is always a twist in the story. It's not necessarily every heart attack will have a chest pain. There are some also kind of silent heart attack. So anyways, in both of the things, we have to do ECG. So basic diagnosis of heart attack is always by ECG. Okay? The ECG we will we'll discuss in the lab. Okay, when you come back to school, then we'll discuss it in the lab, how to analyze ECG. Just give you a quick review of ECG. Just give you a two-minute lecture on ECG. But you have to do the ECG. You have to interpret the ECG in your lab classes, practical classes. Okay, probably in the month of November. So, when you see ECG, you see the ECG is like this. This is one complete wave. This is one heartbeat. One heartbeat. With every heartbeat, you'll see one wave like this. So the, remember the starting wave is called P, this is called P wave, this downward fall is called Q wave, this is called R, this is called S, this is called T. Okay. So ECG wave is complete of P, Q, R, S, T. Okay. So I'll give you some waves and you have to level it okay? later on. So this is P, the starting wave P, Q, R, the peak is R. S and the next part is T wave. It's not S height of P wave, it is a little bit. So remember one thing, just as a beginner, remember one thing, this line, this line, this line, it should be in a straight line, straight line, it should be in a straight line. We call it the isoelectric line, isoelectric line. Okay, just as a beginner, I am not trying to complicate your mind. It's a first class on heart. Okay, on heart attack. So when you see the ECG, first thing you will not understand anything. It happens to everyone. It's all because you have your eyes needs to be trained. You need to train your eyes fast. Okay. So you, when you see this now, this portion, this portion, particularly this portion, we call it ST segment. This is called ST segment. Which is particle ST segment? This ending of the S wave and beginning of the T wave. This portion is ST segment. Okay. So this is a normal wave. Okay. Now I am showing you another ECG wave. Okay. This is one wave. Okay, then I am seeing another ECG wave. Okay, so P, Q, R, S, T. This is ST segment. Okay, P, Q, R, S, T. This is ST segment. Okay, tell me what is, this is the normal, okay? And this is one and two. What are the changes you saw in number one, number two? 
what are the changes you could see can you tell me what is the change in number one ecg wave just focus on st only focus on st what change you find can anyone tell me what change you can find in st segment Yes, the line is not at the same level. If you see number one, the ST segment, this ST segment is not in the, this is this here and here this is up. So you can see this is gone down and here it is gone up, the ST segment. It should be, we should have to start from here. It should be in the same line. Okay, so it, this has gone up. So we call this is ST going up means elevation. elevation and this is it has gone down so we'll call it as the st depression it has been depressed it has gone down so when you find a heart attack either you will find st depression or if you see st elevation is that a difficult to diagnose right anybody can diagnose now yes so there in the ECG you will see lead one lead two lead three AVR, AVR, you see plenty of things. We'll discuss that thing in the lab when we'll come from, we'll do face to face, whether DC or NST, whatever will be the situation. So you will only focus on the lead two, just remember that. You'll focus on the lead two and just quickly, with your, with your all your knowledge, quickly focus on ST segment, whether this is same or not. It don't need a scale, you just can do it in your eyes. It don't need to be perfect. Even little bit of up and down is not hard to take. But if you see little bit, it's not little bit, it's going up, this one is going down. So ST depression, ST depression, ST elevation. Okay, so more common cases are ST, so most, most of the cases there is ST elevation in MI. But there is also ST depression, but whenever this ST segment has gone up and down, we diagnose, diagnose it is an MI, myocardial infarction. So when there is myocardial infarction, it shows it is ST elevation, we call that type of myocardial infarction as STEMI. STEMI. Okay. In next class, I will not say what is STEMI. Say so, STEMI means ST elevated myocardial infarction. And this one, ST depression, it falls on group of non-STEMI cases. Non-STEMI. Okay, so heart attack, are, we differentiate the heart attack in, through by ECG, we have differentiated into two types. Some heart attacks are STEMI, this is ST, elevated myocardial infarction. Some rest of the heart attacks are non-STEMI cases like ST depressed. Because in non-STEMI there is ST depression and there are some other features of ECG also. Okay, I am not confusing it today, I am not confused. I will just stick here, STEMI and non-STEMI. So ST segment will go to up or ST segment will go down. It depends. Okay. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. Okay. So I hope you guys are able to connect to these things. Yes. So ST depression and ST elevation. So when there is a myocardial infarction, first thing you have to know that, that there is a chest pain and it goes to the where it goes to the tip of the left shoulder not to the right shoulder remember okay tip of the left shoulder it's severe there is difficulty in breathing even because shortness of breath and also there will be heavy sweating it's a cold sweat if i tell you the whole face will be like watery okay he's sweating like anything and then it keep quickly you were in the, you were on duty yes you have to give some medicines you have to give him life saving drugs you have to dissolve the clots like you have to you can give aspirin okay and you, for the chest pain you give nitroglycerin mtg nitroglycerin so these are life-saving drugs you first give these drugs nitro nitroglycerin aspirin and then you side by side you'll do ecg and then you'll see the pqrst the isoelectric line so it will just take five minutes so whether it's elevated or depressed Anyways, you think of heart attack means you admit it and you start your protocol. We discuss that treatment later. 
okay so this is how a heart attack will look like okay i'll not say heart attack this is how a mi will look like this is how angina will look like when you say angina it is angina is the chest pain because of mi we so do we don't say chest pain as a health professional they use the term very commonly as angina okay now there is another type of chest pain which is very commonly it's a similar it's a very close to mi pain so most of the time it confuse it takes everyone's time okay and most of the time it can so let's go to now different type of chest pain another type of chest pain Okay, you all know the foot pipe, right? So this is the foot pipe, and this is the stomach. Okay, the foot pipe it's called esophagus. <coughs> esophagus, and this is stomach. Okay, now if you see this esophagus, where the food comes, okay. Now this there is an angle here. This is angle. There is an esophagus here. This part is esophagus, and this is the rest of the part is stomach. And you see this this angle here. This angle. This angle I am talking about. This is called angle of his. Angle of his. Okay. Now if I draw a children a three year old. Esophagus and stomach. How it will look like? It will look like this way. Okay, a three-year-old or a one-year-old baby, a two-year uh, or six-year, six-month-old baby. Their stomach is looked like this. So this is esophagus, and this is stomach. So what is the difference? Yes, the, obviously the size will be bigger and smaller in an adult and a kid. But basic difference is that here there is no angle of his, no angle of his in the children, in the kids, because this thing develops later after three to four years it develops. Okay, in the newborn baby, in the babies it don't have angle of his. It's very straight, right? Now. What is the benefit of this angle of his? Now, because of this angle of his, whatever you have eaten, whatever the food particles you have eaten, this angle of his it stops, it prevents the backflow of the food. It prevents the backflow of the food. It prevents this angle of his. It prevents backflow. Now, if after eating we are lying down instantly, if we took a heavy meal, immediately you lie down in the bed. Obviously, the food particles will go down to the, go down in the neck. Up to the neck, it will come this way. But you are standing and you are not. It's still the food particle is coming to up to the neck, so it means there is a problem in the angle of his. Because normally this angle of his it prevents the backflow of the food. Prevents the backflow of the food. Okay. So because there is a sphincter here, there is a at the junction of the esophagus and the stomach, there is a sphincter. A sphincter means it's like a rubber band which is. Making this, which is making this esophagus narrowed, and it don't let food particles to pass from back to up, down to up. There's a sphincter. We call it sphincter. Okay, there's a sphincter here, which is holding the junction. Okay, which is holding the junction, and it is constricting. It is tightening. It tight the things so that food particles don't don't go up. All right. Now this angle of his and this internal this sphincter and this angle of his they are not so fully developed in babies. That's why when if you are holding a baby and after just feeding them milk, we don't let them sleep immediately. We don't lie them in, make them lie in the bed. Otherwise, everything all the milk will come out. We usually put it in the shoulder and tap until and unless they don't burp. Once they burp, the gas comes out and the food is locked. But if you meet the children immediately after full breast milk, and if you immediately put it in the bed, what will happen? The food, all this milk will come out. 
Now the problem is that the milk is coming out. Problem is also there are two things in the baby because this is esophagus and uh, and we you know what is here in the front. There is a air pipe. This is called trachea. The problem is that this these things, these food particles, they can also go here and they can go to the our. They can go to where? They can go to the lungs. So these food particles can go here because of this closeness here there is, when it will go up 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 there is a particular place where they are lying very close and it can immediately go this way and can the food particles can go to the lungs and can cause infection we call it aspiration pneumonia aspiration pneumonia a baby is not able to breathe properly a baby is having fever baby is having lots and lots of problems and ultimately find out there is a case of aspiration pneumonia Every day mother don't burp and make, make the baby immediately lie down after the milk, after breastfeeding. Now is it a milk that is causing infection? No. Now you know in the stomach there is a heavy powerful acid is secreted called hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. In the stomach lining it secretes the hydrochloric acid. This hydrochloric acid is so strong that it can digest the bones. It can digest the, all the tough food particles it breaks down the food particles into pieces it chops it so we need this hydrochloric acid now when the food particles escaping upwards not only the food particle is going it is also the concentrated hydrochloric acid which is also going that's why when sometimes food regurgitates goes back we feel the pain in the neck we feel like where it is going we know the way okay when the, it goes because of the acid content so this acid content regularly going up Infecting the lung or it corrode, in, 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 destroying this esophagus, it can cause pain in the neck. Okay, so that is in the children also. Okay, that is a different part in the children. Yes, the repeated this thing can also damage their tooth also. Okay, but most of the ha children having tooth deformity are because of this acid contents coming out. This acid contents coming out of the stomach and it coming to the mouth and it damaging the whole portion of the tooth okay so so that is the main pro that is also one problem not main problem the main problem is that what you are what is happening here main problem is that is the backflow of the hydrochloric acid acl which is the normal part a normal volume in the stomach and this thing is coming up so that's why those patients whose this sphincter is loose Okay, where this sphincter is loose, this is the sphincter, it becomes loose. When it becomes loose, when you are repeatedly taking alcohol, alcohol makes it loose. So, after when you when someone takes lots and lots of alcoholic drink, they feel like throwing it up because alcohol makes it relax. Alcohol relax this sphincter, so they relax and food particles go up. Okay, drugs, stress. Okay, obesity, pregnancy, in all these features, there are a whole list of things. So, in all those things, these food particles along with hydrochloric acid, they come up. Okay, and that whole thing, whole syndrome is called GERD, gastroesophageal, gastroesophageal, G for stomach, is E for esophagus, esophageal, because it's coming up. In the backflow, R for reflux disease, G E R D or GERD. So in GERD, the first thing that the patient will complain because the continuously acid content of the food is coming into the neck and coming to the mouth. First thing he will complain, or everyone else will complain. This person is having a very very bad breath. He smells bad. Now, if somebody smells bad, it's not because he didn't brush it. That is also one factor. But if somebody has acid, which is very bad taste, coming up to the mouth every day, he'll have bad breath. That needs proper treatment. Okay, you cannot even take it away after chewing gums. So GERD is a very, very common problem when there is a patient complains of bad breath, all the destruction of the tooth, okay, pain in the throat because the whole esophagus feels like burning. Frequent vomiting, 
there will be frequent vomiting or urge to vomiting which is called nausea this thing happens in adults children refuse to feel refuse to feel they become very fussy and often babies who are crying in the night because this thing happens in the mostly in the night in baby because in the night babies are lying down they are sleeping so during sleeping it has more chance of coming up so when suddenly a baby wake up and cry in the middle of the night for long long hours it is only gut is causing pain in the throat what you need to do you just tap it like obviously mother do this but they don't know why the baby is crying sometimes So most of the time baby is crying because of her because of the sleeping habit what you do in the day in the day you made the baby lie down and put a feeding bottle and the baby is lying down and feeding now when we can't lie down and drink milk or drink water how can a baby can do that that's so bad a bit okay you can imagine can you lie down in the bed and drink water whole day no Can you lie down and drink milk? No, but we are making the babies do like that. We are putting the baby in the cot and putting a bottle. So when you are putting a bottle, what is the problem? Problem is that the milk will go here, milk will come here. With every breath, is coming up and down, and it can also go to the lungs. That is the main problem. They can have difficulty breathing. Very importantly, poor gain in weight in babies. Poor gain in weight. They don't gain weight. they refuse to feed they cry for long hours that happens in babies what happens in adults and also the chest pain they will complain of chest pain that occurs in the night time mostly in the night time okay am i don't have a particular time whether it's in day or night but if the pain is because of gerd it is in the night time because in night time he is sleeping so there is a more chance of having back pressure okay so this is here there is the heart here there is the heart so where the pain because here there is the stomach listen this is the esophagus and here there is the stomach so this patient he is having a he is having gerd so where he will have pain he will obviously he will have pain here where there is a hydrochloric acid will flow this area So when a person is complaining of chest pain, you will ask him where he will chest pain. Then he will know, say, my chest pain is here in the middle of the chest, down here. So this is called epigastric pain. Epigastric pain, and this is because of GERD. This is not an MI. In MI, pain is here, going to the tip of the left shoulder. Okay. So this is epigastric pain. You are. pain is here but if the pain is down here then this is because of ulcer we will not go to that because it's not in the chest today we will discuss only in the chest pain okay so if the second most common cause of chest pain brought to the emergency room in the night the uh, plenty of relatives will come he will come with a full be uh, lots of attendance and there'll be huge rush and he'll cry out of pain and where he'll say pain he'll he'll point it out pain is in my the chest where not in my left side in my chest in the down in the midline and the chest then you should know this is a case of gerd this is not a heart attack you don't panic this is not a case of heart attack this is a case of gerd gastroesophageal reflux disease okay so this pain typically starts in the night because in night time he is sleeping so there is always a chance of back flow so it typically starts here and can sometimes goes in the mid runs in the midline of the body it runs in the midline of the body okay and there is severe pain in here and he will also say a vomiting but one thing you will not get it if it is gut remember one thing you will not get it there is no pain in the tip of the left shoulder and there is no sweating there can be little bit sweating because of some other cause but in mi in heart attack you'll feel the you'll see that he's sweating like anything as if just come out of but he'll sweat like that that's mi okay so this is a case of gerd and in long run of with repeated episodes 
who drink regularly, smoke regularly, and he has no lifestyle, and he you can see, imagine his teeth too to look like this. They were all destroyed tooth, okay, bad breed, and what, and vomiting, nausea, no, and losing weight. These are all the features, okay, and very commonly they most of the time they complain in the night. They have a problem in the night because of chest pain. The, but the problem don't stop here. Problem just has started now. This is the stomach and esophagus. So there is now we know what is gut. There is when there is back flow. Back flow of what? Food particles plus hydrochloric acid. Now this hydrochloric acid is so strong, so concentrated that it can dissolve one razor blade also. If you, if you swallow one blade, it will also dissolve by hydrochloric acid. Now this is happening regularly. It, every weekend he go for party and next Sunday or Monday he is having chest pain and because of hydrochloric acid common reflux. So very soon it will also destroy the esophagus. It will destroy the esophagus. So repeated causes, repeated GERD will cause esophageal cancer which is the end part okay when the esophagus is destroyed we call it the Barrett's esophagus when the esophagus is destroyed we call it the Barrett's esophagus okay so this is the esophagus and some portion of the esophagus will be corroded it will be corroded it will be destroyed okay just like you put some acid what will happen it will be abraded or corroded so some portion of the esophagus will be destroyed we call it Barrett's esophagus and very soon in few years it will become an esophageal cancer so that is the last extension of the GERD so we should not take GERD as uh, very simple so GERD can in years and years and years it can cause esophageal, esophageal damage and years and years after esophageal damage it can cause cancer which will be realized only after 20-30 years of having GERD so that is the thing so this GERD or this epigastric pain and myocardial pain they often mimics together they often mimics in the emergency room sometimes more 80 percent of the time you will admit one guard case as mi but anyways that's not a mistake you have taken a full precaution because you cannot take any chance we release it only when the ecg is normal ecg is normal means what when there is st segment is a normal okay then only we discharge the patient Otherwise, if you think that this GERD is MI, it's okay. You start the MI treatment because we cannot take any chances. But we have to do one ECG in next 5 to 10 minutes. When the patient is stable or we have to do ECG, you can do ECG and you check the ST segment. If it is normal, then it's okay. Just give him some because treatment is both indifferent. In GERD, it is with giving some, giving some antacids, giving some... PPI like pentoprazoles, omeprazole, we are giving this type of drug in GERD which are to reduce the acid amount whereas in MI we are giving we are giving aspirin aspirin to destroy the clot to destroy the fibrin cap we are giving aspirin we are giving to for the pain we can give morphine or nitroglycerin NTG okay we are giving this type of drugs for MI and then for reduce the cholesterol we give statins okay this type of drugs go with MI and in difficulty having breathing we are supplying oxygen supply so treatment is different so when there is GERD it's more about lifestyle we will ask him to change his lifestyle first in the lifestyle do some physical activities second thing no smoking no alcohol Third thing, when you sleep, at least take two pillows. Make your head elevated if you're having guard, so that the ACL should not come to your esophagus. These are small, small things. Eat less spicy foods. Okay. These are small, small things that should be advised to the patient. So, this is about uh, introduction.